Okay, everyone, so I didn't have enough room in my luggage um, to bring my art supplies over here. Um, so I just found a couple of stores to get a few supplies in. I've never used this, um, these types of products before, so it should be interesting. Um, they look okay. Um, I've got 18 by 24 by six centimeters, uh, roughly uh, eight by 10 here. Um, so I'm going to be doing a little painting of Castle del Vecchio in my dad's hometown of Manzarino. This is going to be a gift for my Auntie Pina, my Uncle Rosario, who are um, uh, hosting us when we go visit them. And again, I haven't seen them in over 40 years. The last time I was in Sicily in Manzarino was 40, 41 years ago to be exact. So it's going to be quite the reunion. And I'm very, very excited, and it's also very emotional, too, at the same time. Um, so I'm going to take you guys along with me. You can paint this step-by-step -step with me. It's going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial for you all, and this is so, so exciting. I'm going to um, include photos of uh, our travels here. We're traveling across Sicily, making our way to Mazzarino, and you guys can see uh, more photos uh, on Patreon as well, and a little video. So we've got a painter's palette here that I picked up as well. Tavoloso per Pittura. And I found some paintbrushes. Um, I wish, I really wish that I had uh, planned to bring my own paintbrushes here. These ones, they look pretty good. Um, they're Pinelli painting brush, a six piece. Although it doesn't come with a liner brush, that would have been nice for some smaller details, but uh, I'll make do with what I've got here. And I'm not sure what they feel. They feel like they're synthetic. They're a little stiff because they have to um, go in the water to loosen them up first. But yeah, they feel like a nice little or bristle texture. And I can't wait to try these out. So let's have a look at these paints. <laughs> now, of everything here, the, the paints uh, make me the most nervous because if they're not the right texture, then I'm really not gonna be able to enjoy the process of painting. I'm very picky with my paints um, and paintbrushes, but I can tell these ones are fine. These, I have no idea, but we've got lamp black, titanium white, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, vermilion, crimson red, burnt sienna, burnt umber, sap green, viridian, cerulean blue, and ultramarine blue. So these are all great colors, and I'm sure I can do a lot with these, mix up a lot of different uh, color recipes with these if I need uh, to, of course. So that being said, here are the supplies. I will have a full list below of the exact colors here that I'm gonna be using. So here, I've just opened them up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how they are. I know I'm gonna be using blue. I've got cerulean blue here. I'm gonna be using this for sure for this part of the sky. So that just opens up like this and then you just take the little end that's pointy. Okay, that was a little scary. I thought it was gonna burst out of there little bit messy. Um, that's a really great color. Okay, so I'm going to place a little bit of cerulean blue. I'm also going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue. Take my paintbrushes out. So the first thing I want to do is take, I'm going to pick my largest brush here. And this is, uh, says number 12 or size 12. I'm gonna get it a little bit wet. And what I wanna do is start with my ultramarine blue, a little bit of water, and I'm gonna start adding it across the top. Just pulling back and forth, side to side. So far I'm liking this paint, the brush and the canvas. So far, so good. Okay, so I'm just gonna start to gradiate down from this ultramarine blue right away, picking up a little bit of the lighter blue. And I'm gonna start pulling that over, working my way a little bit up into the darker blue.
I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm gonna pick up some white. A little bit more water. Some canvas will need more water. Some paint will need more water. So it all depends. When people ask me how much water should I be using, it's really not just a straight answer. Like it, because there's so many variables, like it depends, right? Um, on your brushes, the canvas, the paints you're using, the temperature uh, in your room. Now we've got, thankfully, we have, it's been very hot, unusually hot and dry here in Sicily. Um, so it's 30 degrees. Now if you're, it's that, so that's really, really hot. And you can see signs of little fires all over the place. And I'm saying my prayers that we're safe here. We're kind of out in the country right now where we're staying. Um, but we are by very close to the sea, the Ionian Sea. Um, but it is uh, cool in the room I'm painting in right now because we're lucky enough we've got an air conditioner, thankfully. So um, the paint is staying wet longer. I'm just adding a little bit of white here and gradienting down, guys. White water. Do you see that? So sometimes I'll just scoop up the paint and then dunk in the water. Um, and then just gradiating down, making it lighter and lighter and lighter. I'm finding the canvas itself could use a little bit of gesso. So what gesso, I don't have gesso, but I'm just gonna have to use a little bit more water to help the blending because the, the canvas um, is stealing the paint. <laughs> so it's gonna take a little bit more effort, a little bit more water, a little bit more paint. Okay, so we've got a nice gradation here. Um, and we're gonna have a little bit more sky than land. So our horizon line is gonna go, is gonna start a little lower than halfway, okay? Um, what I do wanna add are some clouds next. And I'm gonna add a little bit of red because this uh, color palette, this package of paints did not come with any purple uh, or any pink. So what I'm gonna do is make a, a little shade of my own uh, purple. So I'll give you guys a little color recipe here in just a moment. First, I'm gonna take this and, and dry it off and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a shade of purple now. I've got crimson red. This is a little bit more on the cool side compared to the vermilion. Okay, and I'm gonna add a just tiny bit in there. You don't need very much at all. Uh, so we're gonna need some white and I've got a little bit of blue in there. So that's, that's good. We're gonna be using a little bit of blue. I'm gonna choose the ultramarine blue and we'll see where we're at. I don't know if you guys can see how dark that is right now. Very pretty color, however much too dark. I'm liking that. And I think if I just rinse my brush out here, get the excess. Oh, what a pretty color that is. Do you guys get excited from <laughs> your paint water too when you want rinse your brush out? You know you're an artist when. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more white and make this a few shades lighter. Now, if you're on Patreon, you're going to get um, a little video of me gifting and reuniting with my family tomorrow. I feel like a kid. One more sleep until I see them and gift them with this painting. Uh, sorry for any noise outside. Um, the people that own this building where we're staying, this B&B, own a mint colored Fiat. I love that color and I love uh, that I love Fiat's. So they're cruising it around outside and showing the guests. I'm sure my husband's down there. He's such a car fanatic. He loves old cars and especially Fiat's. Um, 
So if you're a Patreon member, you're also gonna get a reference photo, the reference photo that I'm using for this, uh, as as well as a little video. So uh, I, wanna, I want you guys all to know how much I appreciate you and your support. Um, Patreon members are what uh, make all these videos possible. If it weren't for you Patreon members, I don't think I'd be on YouTube anymore. So I encourage you, if you haven't already, please think about becoming a Patreon member. You get extra content there, of course. Uh, I take requests there. You get some gifts. I send out prints, and I'm gonna have lots of new prints and lots of content coming up when I get back home to Canada. Um, so stay tuned for that. But I think this is a perfect color for the clouds. So let's go ahead, give this a try, and see how we can start transforming the sky uh, and give it a little bit more atmosphere. All right, I've got my canvas here, nice and dry now. And I wanna come in on the horizon line here. And I'm gonna start adding a little bit here, just on the end, I'm still using the same number 12 filbert brush. Add a little bit more white. And we're gonna paint it diagonally. The clouds are gonna go up towards the top right corner. Just little dabs. Don't overthink your clouds. Just add little dabs here and there. Now the filbert brush I would recommend. I'm stuck with all filbert brushes because that's all I could find at the little store. Um, but this brush happens to be just perfect for these little clouds because the filbert brush of course has uh, this round end to it. Now what I'm noticing about these paints is that they're very, the white is more of a zinc white and zinc white of course is transparent. I'm used to using, as you guys know, if you've been watching, I love my titanium white. This is not titanium white, but I'm gonna make do with what I've got. I would recommend, if you're watching at home and wanting to paint along, I'd recommend using titanium white. It's gonna be quicker coverage. me. I feel like every time I film a tutorial, I always get a sneeze in there. Most of the time I remember to edit it out. Once in a while I don't, so I'm going to apologize just in case I haven't <laughs> remembered. Um, my brain is kind of all over the place here, um, traveling. But I got to tell you, after all of the hiking and I almost, almost, I think I might have had a touch of heat stroke yesterday pushed myself a little bit too hard. Um, I'm just continuing down here with the same color, the light purple I made and the white. Um, pushed myself a little bit too hard yesterday, but it's really easy to do that here because there's so much to see and you don't wanna miss anything. And you think, oh, just a few more steps, I'm almost there. Um, then you have to remember that you've gotta go all the way back. So we went and saw the um, Turkish steps. The Scala de, de Turchi. I don't speak Italian. I know like a, a tiny bit. Um, and then we um, went and saw the Valley of the Temples in Agrigento, which were unbelievable. I sat, I found a little patch of shade under uh, over a thousand year old olive tree. It's actually really hard to even like comprehend, comprehend things that are that old. Um, yeah, it's incredible. So I just sat under that olive tree for a little while, trying to comprehend all it's seen, all it's been through, and be very thankful that I was able to be there yesterday. Sometimes we have to take breaks, stop and look around, and appreciate where we are and all that we have. So I'm gonna come over top with a little bit more white now. I'm gonna try to make this <laughs> A little bit brighter and then I'm going to dry it off and we'll come in with the next step. I really need this uh, today after all of the hiking and hustle bustle we've been doing lately. I've been enjoying every minute of it of course but it's really good for me right now to just unwind and relax with you guys and paint. I always feel like when I'm I'm filming these videos, I picture you guys all with me right now. We're all together just painting or relaxing. 
depending on, you know, everybody watches my videos for a different reason. A lot of people like to watch them for relaxation. Okay, and I'm just gonna start to pull a little bit. No water, hardly any paint on my brush. I haven't been using any water at all for these clouds. I don't want them to be transparent, um, but there's two ways of making them transparent, right? Obviously this white is zinc white, it's transparent. You can add a bit of water to thin your paint, making it see-through, or you can just kind of dry brush like this, lightly scumbling over. I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And it all depends on what brand of brush you're using because you can't always go by the number on the brush. It, it, it's just a thing with different companies and different brands. They'll put a number on there and depending, you could have three different brands of filbert brushes that all say six, but they may be all different sizes. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Don't always trust the number that's on the brush that we're using. Just use the size that you feel comfortable with and that you feel is suitable for your for what you're painting. And if you're not sure, small is always better to go with. I would go smaller when especially working on details and, and smaller things. So I just got this brush a little bit wet and I'm gonna dry this off actually first. I forgot that because I've got this extra thick uh, white on here because I really wanted that to show up. Uh, and I might come back after it's all dry and add some more highlights in the clouds with some white later. But I'm going to dry this off and then we're going to come in with the castle. Okay, this is fairly dry. It's a little bit tacky here, a little bit wet still. Just be careful to go over that. I'm now going to mix up um, the color for our castle. I'll just put my water out of the way here. Hopefully you guys can see everything. Um, and I'm going to be using this number six filbert brush. What I want to do is start with a little bit of black and burnt sienna. So I'll get my brush a little bit wet, pick up a little bit of black here, a little bit of burnt sienna, more burnt sienna, like I would say 80, 20 burnt sienna, 80, 20% um, black. So I'm just mix them up. And what we're going to do is start with sort of an arch like this. So I just place my pinky here. I'm going to go over the horizon line, slightly over the clouds. We're going to be covering up some of these clouds. And then I'm going to bring it over. And then kind of straighten it out a little bit here. So it's not a big deal. We're going to be coming in with some foliage to cover up some of this anyway. So don't think too much about it. I'm going to add a little line here. And just paint that in. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of water, thin that out slightly. And I'm gonna start with, go down about an inch, add a little rounded line like this, a little arch, and I'm gonna pull right down to do. Okay, let's mix up a little bit more here. A little bit of water. We're going to come down here, widen this a little bit more. It's always safer to make things a little smaller at first and then add on more after. It's easier to do that then to go back and try to take it off. Okay, so we've got this 
little arch like this. And then we've got this cylinder that comes down here. So to make it look more rounded, if you don't have that rounded look, just push up and make a little arch. Now we've got two or three, because this is very, very old. I mean, we're talking over 2000 years old. This is Castle, Castle Del Vecchio in Mazzarino. a very famous landmark in this town. And we're just gonna add these little kind of broken pieces. So just kind of push up a little like that. And then I'm gonna turn my brush over to make it narrower for these other little pieces. And then we've got another little one right there. I'm just gonna bring this across to make them shorter. So bringing my arch up a little higher. Okay, and then what we've got is a little slant. We're gonna go down about half an inch to an inch. We're gonna add a little slant like this. We're gonna go down and make it a little bumpy, bringing it out a little bit wider here. I'm gonna add a little chunk there, a little chunk there, just by gently pushing up on the side of my brush. See that? And then another one right there. Okay, and we're gonna just fill that in. And then we'll move on to the next one. The next wall is going to go up on this side. So we're going to start here. We're going to come down, move it over just a little bit, bring it down like so. Paint it in. So by painting this first in a dark base, we'll be able to really build up to our highlights and make it a little bit more 3D looking. Okay, so we wanna start the next wall higher than this one. So we're gonna move over here and we're gonna go not halfway down this uh, cylinder, but we're gonna go just below halfway. Okay, on a slight slant like this, and then full width of the brush, kind of bumpy, another slant down, Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. See, it's easy to paint these old historical castles like this because you can be a little bit messy and it's gonna just age it even more and give it more of that character. So I don't want you guys to feel um, intimidated painting something like this. in. I'm just adding a little bit of water to my brush. I've got lots here in my brush and just enough left mixed up here on my palette. Okay, so we've got the basic shape of Castle Del Vecchio. I'm going to rinse my brush out. some white in here. We're going to need some for all of our highlights. And 
a little bit of white. Mix that in. Anything a little darker or lighter than this is just fine too. Okay, I'm gonna start coming in now. Working our way over. Little bit more white. We're gonna need a little bit more of a shadow on this side. And I'm gonna start pulling this way to get that round feeling. To make an object look round, a little bit of yellow ochre. Let's make even a lighter shade now. And then you can just start sort of tapping. To make it look like stones. I'm going to leave some sections darker. Because there's more of a like a rusty burnt sienna shade in some areas. So to make that more visible, we'll start adding these highlights. So isn't that cool how you kind of just get like a texture like that just by pushing and tapping. And you can do this um, when you're paint, if your painting is dry, like that layer, first dark brown layer is dry. I'm adding this, however, to wet paint because I thought it would be neat to um, build up kind of a texture like this and mix up a few more tones in between. Okay, now I'm gonna move on, let that dry for a little bit to the next area here. I'm going to leave a little skinny line in between the walls. And I want you guys to have, have a look here. So these little lines on the top, um, the right side of each one is going to be in shadow. So I'm not going to go over the whole thing. The left side only. can also add little lines. There's different ways to approach it. I'm not going to wait till that I'll wait till that dries a little bit more. Mix up some more paint. And now for this area here, I'm gonna come right over this edge. This is in the front. And I'm gonna leave a little space and pull gently this way, leaving a little bit of a line there. And then I'm gonna leave a space that's dark. more white right down the edge here and then a little darker i'll mix up some of that burnt sienna in the darker just want it to be a little bit darker than the rest see that just add a little bit more in there and then i'm going to take a teeny tiny bit of black 
burnt sienna and add a few little dabs here a little square some windows that we'll see just a hint of blue and in just a minute I'm going to use a little bit more black for this area here and I'll come in on this side with a little bit more black now the black is kind of mixing in with the burnt sienna so I'm not just using straight black I do apologize for any shakiness during this video. I just got a makeshift studio in our Italian b and I'm in Sicily, if you're just tuning in. Um, making our way across Sicily to visit my family in the little town of Mazzarino, where this castle is. I'm going to give this to my Auntie Pina and Michael Rosario. I hope they like it. <laughs> Now, rinsing my brush out, going back over to the yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna, and we'll just continue along here. I'm going to bring this out a little bit wider here towards the base. It comes down just a little bit lower right here. And I'm going to come down. This wall is going to be a little bit in shadow from here to here. So I'll pick up some white yellow ochre, the brightest area is on this one here. And then we've got a little bit more burnt sienna in this one. I'm just going to start the tapping turning my brush tap just to get that texture now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow with my yellow ochre so lemon yellow lemon yellow yellow ochre and white Let's take a little bit more. Got to be generous with this white because it is zinc white. It's not the titanium white I'm I'm normally used to. I'm gonna add some more on this end piece here, and then I'm gonna come up and dab. the front wall and there's like different size random stones so you don't have to be super careful about this I don't want you guys to feel intimidated okay I'm gonna come up a little bit more white making it brighter right here And then a little bit lower around the side. Let's pick up a little burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and my burnt sienna. And just dab a little bit more burnt sienna. Let's warm this area up. Some of these areas. A little bit more warm. Burnt sienna is such a beautiful warm. It's one of my favorite shades. It's my go-to for, um, you know, like when I choose brown, I usually use burnt sienna and I'll mix it with whatever I need to. I'm going to add a little bit of black to this because we've got a shadow. A line that comes down right here. 
shadow on that side. And I'm gonna take a little bit of black and we'll add some windows. So again, we've got some windows over here and just some brick that pops out causing a shadow there. There, there, um, little arch. Arch on the top and then square on the bottom, but again, it's an old, I believe this Castle Del Vecchio is over 2,000 years old. A little dab, 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 dab there for tiny ones. And then one little guy right there. And then just kind of straight up and down for one there. I'm just gonna come down here and add a little bit more shadow. There we go. Just needed to be a little darker. Now straight black. Little window, window here, here. They're just gentle little poles. Burnt sienna with my black. And just kind of tap in here around some stones. Kind of weaving in and around. And then we're going to have, don't forget, we're going to have our trees and foliage. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white now. There's a tiny bit of yellow ochre in here too, or you can just use straight white. I'm going to get some edges around these windows to make them stand out. Bring it up over top. So now we can come in and add some more highlights as this is drying the edge here. Carefully around those windows at the top. Tap, tap, and tab. Quickly over to my yellow ochre. It's this area here, it's a little bit more, and the burnt sienna, a little mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And then I'll add just a little tap, tap, tap. There's all these different ways of creating texture. Pulls, lines, different directions. A little bit more away where I want that to be nice and bright and then in this window here along the left side
Oh, this crumbling wall down here. Now, there is a tiny bit of blue sky showing through this window right here, this one. So I'm just gonna add a little dab of blue like that. It's not a big deal, but I just wanted to add that because I know it's there. I'm gonna come in with a clean brush and some white and add a little bit of highlights now that the background has dried. Maybe I can get some uh, brighter highlights here. Just straight white. It's very transparent. using the number 10. So if you have a small mop brush, I would recommend using a tiny mop brush. Small because this is a small canvas. However, if you're painting on a larger canvas, then use a larger mop brush. Now, the only set of brushes I could find uh, at the store that I was at here in Sicily we're all filbert brushes, different sizes. So that's why if you're just tuning in now, I'm, I explain this all in the beginning of the video and I go over all the supplies, but um, that's why I'm using all filbert brushes. But normally I would use a mop brush for uh, my treetops and bushes and foliage and all that kind of stuff. So I wanna make an olive green. Um, everything here is very olive green colored. So not blue green, right? Blue green is a cool green. We wanna make a yellowy green. Um, and I like to make those um, shades. Let me just clean this area off here and I can show you guys how to make olive green. Now, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of, this is a lemon yellow, this is a sap green, not like the sap green I normally use by Liquitex Basics, but again, I'm using makeshift products that I could only find at a little store in Sicily. And then a little bit of black. So let's see what that gets us. I need a darker base first, so I'm gonna add a little bit more black. There we go, that's a good shade. A very dark, dark, deep olive green. And what I'm gonna do is turn my brush this way on the side, and I'm gonna just start adding little dabs And then you can turn it to the full width like this. And we'll be coming over. And add just a little bit. Usually I don't add more black, but this is um, very transparent paint. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add a little bit more black. A little bit more yellow. Dab, dab, dab. Some little ones here. And I'm going to come around right here. So not all the way over to this side, not off the canvas. Right about here, I'm just going to come over, tap a little bit in those, in that rock wall. And then a little bit in here. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and lemon yellow. A little bit of water. And start pulling down. A slant this way. So down on a slant this way, a little arch. And then we'll just add little lines. And come all the way down here. 
So find the right corner, the bottom of your canvas, move over about an inch, and that's how far over you're gonna take it. And I'm gonna turn my brush like this and just kind of tap because there's some highlights, lighter areas with some rocks and they're more of like a yellow ochre color. Oh, I'm really excited about this painting. I hope my auntie and uncle like it. I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments below. This is very different. I don't have any other videos like this where I'm painting in another country. Um, I just really appreciate all of everything you guys have done for me, all of your support over the years here in Patreon. And uh, so I wanted to share this personal um, experience with you all and this journey. I'm getting in touch with my roots. The last time I was in uh, Sicily was uh, 41 years ago and I'm visiting, making my way across Sicily, um, visiting my dad's hometown where I still have some family there. Unfortunately, my grandparents, my Nona and Nono have passed away, um, but I've got aunties, two aunties and two uncles there and cousins. And I cannot wait to be reunited with them. It makes me emotional talking about it, so I gotta stop so I can get through this painting. <laughs> so I'm just taking, going back to that black, green, and yellow, and I'm gonna add some darker patches in here, building up shadows under the trees. So a little black, a little yellow, a little sap green. Okay, I normally use um, uh, Liquitex Basics, but this is all I could find, and they're a little thinner than what I normally use, but I'm liking them. Just adding some of these lines, okay? This is going to be the shadows um, from underneath the olive trees. Olive trees are everywhere here, as well as um, cacti, no, prickly pears. And you can eat those. I haven't tried them yet. Clean brush, white, and mostly white with just a hint of this yellow ochre now. So I'm just gonna dab. Wherever we have these little blank spaces, I'm gonna dab and add that. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more here. So the rock, rock and sand is just this color. There's definitely, I haven't seen any like dark soil anywhere. And then around those shadows, we're going to have these little white and yellow ochre patches. Right? If you have dark shadows, you're bound to have bright highlights. So let's dab some of that around. A little bit here and there. Now I'm gonna to try to paint some little tree trunks. I don't have a liner brush, so I'll show you how to do it by just turning, making your filbert brush really flat, a little bit wet, and right into my white, a little bit of yellow ochre. So we'll start with the back ones here. A little line, then a little, a little bit taller and thicker as they get here towards us. There's a little bit more yellow ochre this time. And then I'm gonna dab a little bit more yellow ochre on the rocks around here. I'm gonna come down here in between the wall and the dark green with yellow ochre. Then I'm gonna take lemon yellow, sap green, and tap a little bit of 
little hints of green in here. So see how that's that green just looks really unnatural. So I'm just toning it with some lemon yellow. Now the trees, they're olive trees and they're all olive green. So that more of that yellowy green. However, this grass down here, the weeds and the grass have a little, just a touch of that sap green in there. Just changed my paint water. It was getting pretty dirty. And I'll go back here and add a little bit of white with my greens. It's almost like sort of a silvery grayish green that you want. And then I'm going to hold my brush like this and I'm going to just lift and tap little lines like this. Just make them look kind of frosty. You want to make sure you have some shadows underneath still. Now I want to bring back a little bit more shadows right in here, the photo, which I'll supply. You can download it for free on Patreon. You'll be able to see how dark this is and why I'm adding black. I normally don't use a lot of black in my paintings. You guys know that, but this black, this paint I'm using is a little different. So it's not like as black as the Liquitex. So I can get away with it. Gives us some really nice uh, shadows in there. Now, right in here, I'm just gonna go back to the building here the castle and just kind of cut across right there for a little bit more definition this is going to make it a little bit more uh, 3d just a little bit of black Okay, now I'm gonna keep this black in here and pick up some yellow and I'm gonna come around. We're gonna do a tight curve right in here. Okay, we've got the path coming down, the road coming down here. And we've got this little patch of grass. So we're gonna leave a little white line, bring it out and then across. Just think of it as a backward C, the letter C. Sometimes that helps to like just break things down instead of saying, oh, I'm coming in here with the grassy area uh, or the road or whatever it is. If you just tell yourself, well, you know, what does this look like? Basically, it just looks like a C. And then you just do that and it makes it a lot easier. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of white and yellow to the far left kind of goes down so it's a, a like a cliff or a hillside that goes down so then that's how you paint it you pull your brush stroke down like that down just like that and then over this way okay i'll take a little bit more black a little bit of yellow And just tap along the side here in between some of those lines. And then pick that up like that. I'm going to have a 
wiggly line that gets a little wider as it comes down here. This is the rock wall, a low rock wall, and then it gets really narrow up there. I'm going to push this back a little bit, making that more narrow or narrower. And let's take a little bit of burnt sienna, some black, a little bit of water, mix it in with some of the green. So watered down paint right now. I'm just going to add little loopy patches like this. Wiggling, using the edge of my brush. You could use a liner brush for this. I've just got filbert brushes because that's all I could find. So this is the wall here and then there's just some stones and little lines like this curving around and come a wider here for the path leading up path road leading up to this castle I'm sure you can drive up it definitely seems wide enough I just added some water to my brush I'm going to come across, just making it look like... That's what I really love about Italy too, these European countries. Not that I've been to many, but I'm sure they all have, or most of them have, these old rock roads, old stone roads, and I just love that. Okay, I'm going to take some white, a little bit of yellow ochre in here. Dab. Dab for a little bit of color. And there's a little bit more on this side. So what I'm going to do, because we've got the inside of this wall, right? So I'm going to pull my brush this way and kind of pull and tap down. A little bit of the burnt sienna black and green. Back over to a little bit of white because I'm kind of losing this wall here. Dab that back in. And just alternating with different colors of the castle if you the only thing that's not on this path like color wise there's no burnt sienna so just the deep olive green yellow ochre and then we've got little bits of weeds and grass so i'll just kind of tap the areas here but this is, this is turning out to be quite pleasant. I really like this painting. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel, you know, painting out of my um, comfort zone in my studio and all my filming equipment. I don't have anything here. I've just got a little clip camera thingamajigger. I don't know what you call them, but my, my phone, I've got my iPhone here clipped to the table in our bed and breakfast and I just really wanted to share this experience with you guys it's fun for me to do this and you know if you've got a a rainy day or it's winter time I'm filming this uh, October 7th 2023 
Yeah, it's kind of relaxing watching art videos. And I'd love to see your versions of this, so if you want to paint along, that's what I'm making these for. Now there's a little railing as well, right along here. I'm going to use black and burnt sienna. And start above and then bring it back here. Another C. <laughs> and some little lines. And then few little lines here and they sort of have little diagonal ones here but I'm going to add a little bit of white to my brush for those white ones and this is a little tricky to do with a, a liner brush and I'm just looking at things that I want to add a little bit more color saturation too. This area in here where you've got the olive tree. A little more yellow ochre and white. And a little wall here along the side. A little bit of black. Greenery. Vines or whatever. What I was surprised to see here um, was ivy. I didn't think ivy. It's like English ivy. And I, I didn't think that grew in Sicily. And there's the most beautiful purple flowers. Well, there's beautiful flowers everywhere. There's the bougainvillea. Um, and, but there's also these morning glory looking flowers. They look like morning glory. And they definitely aren't morning glory because they are bloomed. They stay bloomed all day. Do you know what I mean? Like morning glory is obviously just a morning blooming flower. And then it closes up during the day. But these ones, these ones are the most gorgeous shade of purple and they are just growing. They grow like uh, weeds here down the countryside, down the hillsides, around the vineyards. And so many times I just want to be like, stop the car. I need to get out and get a picture of this, but um, it's not safe. I gotta say that about the driving here. It's pretty crazy. So be forewarned if you come to Sicily or like Rome as well. We um, flew into Rome, so we wanted to work off our jet lag a few days in Rome before we rented our car and, and drove anywhere. I'm just adding a little bit more black in here before I finish this painting. Um, yeah, people just use the signs, the lights as a suggestion they're gonna do their own thing and it's pretty dangerous my husband's been doing an amazing job um, navigating around of course we have a GPS but um, <laughs> there's a lot of places here that don't have signs so you kind of find things after three wrong turns an hour later but when you make a wrong turn, you end up finding uh, a beautiful castle or a beach. So that can be kind of fun too. That's why it's nice just renting a car and doing your own thing. A little bit more white just before I call this painting done. So I'm gonna include a few photos of um, 
my stay here in Sicily so far in this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoy this and leave a comment below if you enjoyed watching this, if you have any stories or experiences um, traveling in Sicily or Italy in general. Uh, and I hope you guys are all doing well. I want to wish you all the best. Thank you so much again. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!